Hey kids, what time is it? Rachel's gonna hand you a baton, all right? And so, your cones are all the way at the other end of the room, okay? You have to run down there to the cone and run back. When you run back, you're gonna pass this off to your teammate. You understand? The first team to get everybody to run and go back and come back is gonna be our winner, all right? So, does everybody understand the game? Are you ready to play the game? Woo! This game is called Run From Temptation. I think they're ready. Are you boys and girls out here ready for the game? Woo! Oh, who do you think is going to win this relay race? Who do you think is going to win? Boys the and girls. girls. Oh, we'll have to see. All right. Can we get some music? We're going to get us started. Here we go. On your mark, get set. Go! Woo! Come on, you guys! Good job! Good job! All right, boys, that's the first time. All right, audience, you have to cheer on your Woo! team, okay? Let me hear you go, cheer, girl, go, girl, go, girl! Let me hear you cheer! Woo! Oh, man, this is so intense! Good job, oh. girl, keep going! Question for you. What is your favorite candy bar? One, two, three. I heard broccoli. Is that correct? Broccoli flavored candy bar. What brand is that? It, I must have misheard. Let me try again. One, two, three. Corn flavored. Corn. Is that what I heard? No? Okay, one more time. I think I got it. All right. What is your favorite candy bar? Go. Cantaloupe. Cantaloupe. Is that what you said? Cantaloupe? No. Okay, I think I'm, it's because there's too many of you talking at once. I think I need to find out a few of you. What is your favorite candy bar? What is yours? Twix. 
Twix. I like Twix. Those are really, really good, actually. That's probably one of my favorites. M&M bars. M&M bars. All right. Fancy. Okay, how about you? Kit Kat bar. Yeah. Give me a break. All right. That's pretty good. Kit Kat bar. Okay, second row here. Um, three Musketeers. Fancy. Three Musketeers. All right. I'm going to get two more. How about you right here? Reese's. Where are my Reese's people at? I love Reese's. That that used to be like my all-time favorite. I think it's still up there. Okay, last one. Payday and Zero. Payday and Zero. Do you put them together? So you like melt them in the microwave or something? Which one's your favorite? Payday. All right. How many like Payday? Anyone like Payday? I don't like Paydays. That's gross. I like the real Payday. That's exciting. All right. Well, most of you don't have this. Anyways, we are not talking about candy bars today. No, we're talking about prayer. In fact, we are learning from our series called, do you remember? That was really pathetic. I think the kids watching online were louder than the kids in the room. So we're going to try it again because I heard them through the wires or something. Wi-Fi. The Wi-Fi came through. I don't know how that works. All right, so we're going to try it again. We're learning from a series called... That's right. Teach us to pray. And I am so excited because we are learning how to pray from the example that Jesus gave his disciples called the what? The bloopers? No, the Lord's prayers. That's right. We are learning from the Lord's prayer. That is so true. And we are learning it as a group in here. Can anyone say the whole Lord's Prayer? Like, have you memorized it? All right, come here, man. Let's see if you've got it. All right, he's going to lead us, but I want everyone else to say it with him, okay? So you can take your time and say it slow, okay? All right, you ready? Let's say it all together. Here we go. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For God is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Rock on. Hey, wait, you just passed me up on a really awesome high five, so I'm going to chase you down for it. Way to go, dude. That was fantastic. Now, you got to learn it, too, just like he did. Most of you did really, really good until the end, which is great because you're learning it as we go. And so today we're learning another part of it. We're learning the next part, which is lead us not into temptation. In other words, please don't lead us into temptation. Keep us away from that stuff. How many of you know what temptation is? Anyone know? It's not a singing group from the 60s. Nope. That's, I heard someone say that, I think. Yeah, it's not. No. Nope. Uh, does anyone know what it means? What's temptation? Yell it out. Let me see if evil, okay, yeah. Satan trying to trick you, yeah, that's pretty good. What else? Does anyone know what temptation is? That's pretty good, yeah. Temptation is temptation is the the thing that Satan uses to trick us or to trap us in sin. And sin is not good, right? No way. So we want to ask God to help us. Lead us not into temptation. Help us to get away from the devil's tricks and traps. And so today we are learning that we need to avoid temptation. How, have you ever been tempted to sin before? Yeah, I've been tempted to sin before. We all have. In fact, even Jesus was tempted to sin in the Bible. We'll, we'll, uh, we can look in the Bible and find several times where Satan tried to even tempt him. But today we are going to be learning all about how we can avoid temptation with God's help. But right now, I want us to check in with our friend Peyton and find out what she's got to say about this week's part of the Lord's Prayer. Check it out. Hey everyone, it's me, Peyton, and it's time to get back into our series called Teach Us to Pray. Oh look, an apple. I wonder who left it here. Hmm, I better pick it up. Haha, huh? -ha, I caught you in my trap. Why did you do that? You took the bait and now you're in my trap. Ha ha, now let me out of here. I have a video to shoot. Say please. Let me out of here now! Uh oh. I can't believe my brother did that to me, but it kind of reminds me of the part of the Lord's Prayer that we are learning about today. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Remember how my brother got me into that trap? He said the apple was bait. Well, temptation is the bait for the trap of sin. The devil lays temptation all around us to make us fall into the trap of sin. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, that devil, he is a bad, bad dude. He's downright naughty. He sure is. The devil is the enemy of our souls. He wants us to sin more than anything else. That's why we should pray every single day for God to help us not to fall into the trap of sin. There are a lot of things Satan tries to tempt us with. Have you ever been to the store and you didn't have enough money to buy a piece of candy? Sometimes Satan puts temptation in front of us to try and make us steal things that don't belong to us. Or have you ever been over at a friend's house for a slumber party? Their parents are in bed and somebody starts to play a movie that you know you're not supposed to see. You're tempted to watch it, but it's totally not good for you. Or you're in class trying to take a test and you're sitting by the smartest girl in class. It wouldn't take anything just to lean over and look at her answers. Well, that's the devil trying to set out a trap of temptation for us to cheat on that test. That is temptation. We must pray that God would help us stay away from Satan's traps. If we ask, he'll deliver us from temptation and from evil. Well, it's time for you to get into your lesson today as you learn about the Lord's Prayer and avoiding temptation. This is Peyton reminding you, you can pray every single day. See ya! It's so true. You can pray every single day, and that is why we're learning the Lord's Prayer, so that we can spend time with God and so that He will always be close to us and be able to help us stay away from temptation. Now, how many of you want to stay away from temptation? Anybody, like, just don't want to be around that stuff? Oh, yeah, me neither. It's terrible. I don't want to be tempted to sin and mess up. I'll tell you, sinning is bad because well, we're going to learn later the price for sin is pretty high, and we don't want that. So we are going to do our very best to stay away from sinning, stay away from doing the wrong thing. In fact, I want to take just a little moment right now to go a small break and remind everybody what it means to be a model kid. This will help you even online. If you're watching, I want you to pay close attention all throughout the service. That means when it's time to stand up, you stand. When it's time to sit down, you sit. When it's time to say things, you can say them, of course. But when it's time to be quiet, you've got to be very, very quiet. Because all of our leaders are looking for people who are being model kids. We are checking around the room to see who's paying attention, who we want to give 20 power bucks to, all right? So make sure you're paying close attention. You don't want to miss anything in our lesson today. Now, it's time for us to check in with our good friend Big Ray and see what you got to know. What you got to know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? What you gotta know? Hey there, kids. I'm Big Ray, and I'm here to tell you what you gotta know. Today, we are learning about how to handle temptation. So anytime today you hear somebody ask you what you gotta know, you tell them. I need God's help to avoid temptation. Satan tries to trick you by telling you all sorts of stuff about sin. He tells you stuff like, it'll be fun. It won't hurt you. God won't mind. But that guy lies more than Pinocchio. He, in fact, is the father of lies. Don't you listen to a word he says. Instead, you got to trust God and follow him. Run from temptation. You'll be a lot better off. So anytime today you hear somebody ask you what you got to know, you tell them. I need God's help to avoid temptation. And that right there is what you gotta know. This is Big Ray, and I'll catch you on the flip side. What you gotta know. Oh yeah, so every time Big Ray pops up on the screen, you never know what he's gonna say. You never know when he's gonna say it, but he's gonna pop up on the screen. And we have to... 
Well, that's right, big old biscuits. We gotta rise up and say what you gotta know as loud as we can that's right. all together. That's right. Mm -hmm. So get ready. Here we go. Hold up, hold up, hold up. What you gotta know? I need God's help to avoid temptation. Wow. Do you know Mr. Tation? Who? He's got a great first name, Tim. Temptation. Oh, I get it. I get <laughs> hold it. Up, hold up, hold up. That's not what we're talking about. Here we what go. What you gotta know? I need God's help to avoid temptation. Wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, they're but, doing a great job. You know what? I think we should say it louder. I think you're I mean, right. Really, 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 really loud yeah. is not enough. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it right. needs to be way louder. Even louder than yeah, that. Yeah, even louder. Hold so on, let's try on, it again. On. What you gotta know? I, I need God's help to avoid temptation. Wow, that was awesome. Yeah. That was fantastic. I love it. That was great. You know what? I love Slam because we're always doing really fun things here. We're always we having really a great time. We really are. And uh, I just, I love being a part of it. Hold on, hold on. Oh, we're doing it again. Well, here, here we go. go. Speaking of great know? things. I need God's help to avoid temptation. Wow. That was fantastic. Speaking of avoiding things, I've been avoiding Miss Patty, and I'm going to let you talk to her. Oh, okay, cool. Here she comes. Well, God bless and good evening, boys and girls. Everyone say hello, Miss Patty. Oh, my dear, I don't mean to be rude, but your breath stinks worse than a skunk farm in July. What? Is it really that bad? It's making my nose hairs curl. Oh, goodness. But don't worry, I have something for you if you'd like it. Oh, well, if it'll help my breath, then yeah, I would love it. One thing every granny has in her purse is gum. Now, would you like some of my special gum? Oh, special gum? Well, what makes it so special? Oh, well, it's been passed down from Sunday school teacher to Sunday school teacher for generations. Here, just let me find it. Oh, well, uh, that sounds oh. disgusting, but okay. <laughs> oh, that's not it. What in the oh, world? Oh, I'll find, oh. What? Yeah. <laughs> what in the world is in your purse, That's Betty? awkward. Here we go, I found my special gum. Now, my dear, would you like some of this special gum? I do have to warn you, though. The moment you put it in your mouth, it will give you minty fresh breath for the rest of your life. Wow. But it will give you blue ears. What? Oh my goodness, why do you even have gum like that? Well, I'm an old lady, Missy. I'm set in my ways. Now, are you tempted to have some of this gum? Well, I have to admit that I am a little bit tempted just because you... <gasps> Ow! Oh! Why did you do Ow, that? Temptation! Ow! Ow! Be gone, temptation! Miss Patty, what are you doing? Well, I'm doing the Lord's work. How on earth is giving me gum that will turn my ears blue and then beating me with a ruler the Lord's work? Well, you see, you were tempted to have some of my special gum. And the Lord's Prayer today says, Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I was just delivering you from the evil of blue-eared minty freshness. <laughs> Miss Patty, you know, I am kind of tempted to tell you. <gasps> out, temptation! Out, no, okay, out. what I meant was I feel like I should tell you that that's not exactly what the verse means. Yes, we are learning that the Lord's Prayer says lead us not into temptation, but just because you've been tempted doesn't mean that you've sinned. See, when we face temptation, we can pray to God and ask for him to deliver us so that we don't sin. He can help us to avoid temptation. You don't have to beat the temptation out of people. All you have to do is ask God and he will deliver you. Well, that's what I was going to say. You know this young generation is so ungrateful. You're here telling me that I'm beating people. Well, oh, what did I do this time? Now everybody knows I wouldn't hurt a fly. Uh-huh. Now, my sweet angels, 
I do have to go, though. I'm so sorry. I'm cooking a steak tonight, and I got to sharpen my dentures. So God what? bless and good evening, my sweet oh, little my angels. <laughs> Everyone say bye, Miss Patty. See you later. Did you hear that? She's about to sharpen her dentures. Man, I need some ice for my arm. She hit me so hard. She said she couldn't hurt a fly. Yeah, right. That hurt really bad. Hold on, oh, hold everyone, hold stand hold up, stand up. What you got to know? I need God's help to avoid temptation. Oh, wow. Miss Patty Primor is something else, isn't she? She really is. She is, Lacey. Wow. All right, boys and girls, it is our offering time. I love this time doing the service. So, because this is our opportunity to give to God. So, Miss Lacey, can you help me out? We need a prayer person, someone who would love to pray you over pray? the offering. All right, boys and girls, I need everybody to bow your head and close your eyes. Jaden is going to pray over the offering for us. Dear God, thank, dear God, thank you for this day. Help us to have a good day tomorrow. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jaden. All right, you're going to turn Miss Penny on right there, and I'm going to turn on Mr. Nicholas over here. We're going to have our first row come and give your offering. If you have offering to give from the first row, come on. All right, second row, bring your offering. Good. All right, boys and girls. All right, we have that. We're going to take this and we're going to have it counted. And we, the team that gives the most, the boys or the girls, the first place team will get two power bucks, and our second place team will get one power buck because we're, we're all winners, winners when we, we give, give to, to God. God. That's right. Of course. Now, I want everyone to stand up on your feet. Everybody stand up. Stand up. If you got toys, go ahead and put them away. Put them beside you, anything like that, just out of your hands because... It is time for us to praise the Lord together. So as the song starts, everyone stand up on your feet and get your hands together. And let's get ready to dance because this song is all about showing off our best moves. With every breath that I take, I'll praise you. With every move that I make, do the robot. With everything that I am, I'll praise you because there is no other way. Cut your hands. We stand.
as we have jumping and screaming and worshiping the Lord, it is just as awesome to sing quietly and give the Lord everything we've got. So right now, let's focus completely on the Lord. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore. worship you because you are so amazing. God, we thank you that we are able to come here together and just worship you and praise you and not have to worry about what other people think. 
and to give you everything that we've got. Lord, we thank you for all that you do for us. We love you, Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys can have a seat and listen to Miss Sharon. All right, boys and girls. It is now time for our Bible story. So in today's story, this is one you are probably very familiar, that is very familiar to you. Remember when we learned about how God created a wonderful world full of plants and animals? Then he created man and he created woman. And the man he called Adam, very good. And the woman he called, very good, he did. He called the woman Eve. Adam and Eve had a wonderful life. They had everything that they needed. God gave them only one rule. He said, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat, you will surely die. Well, that sounds pretty easy, right? Just one rule. Yeah, all Adam and Eve had to do was obey God, and he had promised to provide for them and to protect them. One day, while Adam and Eve were walking in the garden, Satan took on the form of a snake and came up to them. Satan asked Eve, did God really say you can't eat, you can, you can't eat any fruit in the garden? No. Eve answered, we can eat any fruit except this tree. God told us that if we eat from this tree, we will die. So Satan says to Eve, you will not surely die. God just doesn't want you to be as smart as he is. Was that the truth? No, it wasn't. Satan was tempting Eve to disobey God's instructions. Satan lied to Eve and tried to try to try to get her to sin. Then Eve made a terrible mistake. She listened to Satan's lies and ate the fruit from the tree. Everybody said, ooh. So to make things worse, Eve turned around and gave some of the fruit to Adam. Adam was not sure about what, what the snake had said, but guess what? Adam made the same terrible choice. Adam gave in to, to, to temptation and ate of the fruit. With that, Adam and Eve committed the very first sin. Now, Eve had made a, Eve had made a big mistake. She gave in to Satan's temptation. Eve isn't the only human being, though, that Satan has lied to. In fact, he is still lying today, trying his best to deceive human beings into disobeying God and falling into sin. But boys and girls, today we are going to learn how to handle the temptations in our own lives. And we are also going to learn how not to fall into the Satan, how not to fall into Satan's trap of temptation. All right, boys and girls. So, was that a good Bible story? Did you guys enjoy it? All right, that was awesome. So now we are going to put, pay attention, because we are going to go to our power verse with Presto Changeo. <laughs> Once again, it is I, Presto Changer, the Magnificent, here to teach you today's Power Verse. Nothing up here, nothing up here, nothing up here. Today's Power Verse says, And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew 6, 13a. Ha <laughs> ha! What an amazing Power Verse, boys and girls. But just like I do in my sold out shows all over the world, really in my living room with my grandma, I'm going to make things poof disappear right before your very eyes. I will make words from the power verse disappear with the help of my handy dandy sidekick. Hocus Pocus, I'm so glad you are here. You will be helping us with this mind blowing disappearing trick. Hokey, say hello. Whatever. Can we just get on with the power verse? Yes. Let's take a look at it. 
Ah, yes! Now, which word should I make disappear? Hmm, how about this one? This one! And this one! Ha-ha! <laughs> now, let's see how well you remember it! Kids, you are going to say the power verse again with Hokey! It's Hocus Pocus! You're going to say the power verse on the count of three. One, two, or three. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew 6, 13a. Ha <laughs> ha, that was pretty amazing. You were able to say the power verse with the disappearing words, but prepare to be amazed. Er. I'm going to make even more words disappear before your very eyes, like this one, and this one. Okay, okay, you said it once with the disappearing words, but let's try it again. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Matthew 6, 13a. Beautiful job! Thank you, children, and Hocus Pocus! It's Hocus Pocus! Oh, never mind, you got it right! And now to make myself disappear, I am Presto Changeo saying, Now you see me, now you don't! Be ba da ba da dee do dee do! Oh yeah, so that is a great power verse, but right now it is time for us to get into our lesson, and I need everyone to go ahead and get into your LLP. Does everyone know what your LLP is? Oh yeah, listen and learn position. This means even if you're watching online, make sure you are listening and ready to learn. Now, here's what it looks like for those of you that don't know. You should be sitting up straight. I'm going to see everyone sitting up straight. Oh, yeah. Your hands should be in your lap, not playing with any toys or power books or name tags or ponytails or anything else like that. In fact, if you've got things in your hands, go ahead and just put them down beside you or in your pocket. I want to see everybody's empty hands. Can I see your empty hands? Empty hands, empty hands, empty hands. All right, now put your empty hands together. Put them in your lap. Then leave them right there. Perfect. Awesome. And you should have your feet on the floor, or at least dangling down towards the floor. No crisscross applesauce or back behind your head or anything like that. Make sure you are leaned in, focused, ready to listen. That means you should have your eyes wide open looking right up here at me. Your ears should be wide open listening to every word that I say. And your mouth should be wide open in amazement, just drooling because you're hearing the greatest lesson. No, it should be closed. That way you're not tempted to say something to your neighbor. All right, now, we are learning about temptation. We're learning about the Lord's Prayer, and this particular part of the Lord's Prayer says, lead us not into what? Temptation, of course, and we have learned today so far that temptation is what the devil tries to do to trap us in sin. He tries to get us to be trapped with all of his tricks and schemes. And have you ever been trapped before? Anyone ever been trapped? Maybe you were playing hide and seek and you crawled into a really tiny spot. It was easy to get in, but uh oh, when the game was over, or maybe because everyone else moved on because he couldn't find you. You were stuck. You were trapped in that spot, and you couldn't get out. Or maybe you've heard of people uh, that they are miners. They go into big mines, and they, they dig deep holes into the ground. They go down to these caves, and they're working really hard. And all of a sudden, the rocks fall, and they're trapped underground. They're trapped in a little tiny spot, and they've got just a little bit of air to breathe, and they're stuck in a big old hole or a big old cave, and they're trapped. Isn't that scary? I'd be scared to death, yeah. Or maybe you've seen people, uh, you've seen stories of people that were snowboarding or snow skiing, and they were going down this big snowy mountain. It was so cool, and they were so awesome, and they were skiing on through there, and it was pretty cool. They were going around the trees and the little flags and stuff, and they, they were pretty cool. But then an avalanche came. Anyone know what an avalanche is? 
Yeah, that's when all the snow starts coming down from the top of the mountain, and all of a sudden they get buried up in the snow, and they are trapped. Wouldn't that be pretty scary to be trapped in the freezing cold snow? And no one could barely see your, like your hand hanging out of the snow. It was like You're just out in the middle of the, the countryside and the way up in the mountains and the snow. Oh, my goodness, it would be so scary. You know, one time I got trapped. It's kind of an interesting story because when I was in about kindergarten, maybe first grade, I was riding my bike. And I wasn't a very good bike rider yet, and so I had training wheels. And there's nothing wrong with training wheels, so I had them on, and I was practicing riding my bike in the garage. And that day, we had two cars in the garage, and this was, I was a little kid, so I, it was a little bitty bike, and I was able to ride around the cars in the garage. And my dad was working on the garage door because it was broke. Something wasn't working with it. And so he was going back to that little thing on the ceiling in the middle that makes it go up and down. He was working on it. Then he'd go over and he'd press the button, and it would go up a little bit. And he'd say, oh, nope, that's not right. And go back and press it and go back up there. And he was working hard on this garage door. And let me tell you, boys and girls, I was going by that garage door one time, and my training wheel and my handlebar got caught on the garage door. Just at the same time that my dad, he didn't see me because he was all the way back around the cars. He was pressing the button to make the garage door go up. And I was stuck on the garage door on my bike. And I was riding up. And I was nervous. And I said, oh, help, help. I'm trapped. I'm stuck. And my dad came running. And he's, he pulled the bike off and stopped the garage door. But could you imagine what would have happened if the garage door kept going and my dad didn't hear me screaming, help, I'm trapped. I would have ridden all the way up and then I would have just pff, fallen on the ground. I'd have been really hurt. It would have been terrible. Wouldn't that be awful? I was so glad, though, that my dad saw me and helped me out because I did not want to be trapped on that garage door. Well, today we're learning that Satan, he wants to trap us. He wants to catch us. He wants us to get caught in sin. And boys and girls, here's the thing. Sin is a trap. Everyone say that with me. Sin is a trap. It's true. Sin is a big, scary trap. See, Romans 6.23 in the Bible says that the payment or the cost, or even some versions say the wages, that's just a fancy word, the cost or the payment for sin is, does anyone know? Death. Death. Everyone say, oh, no. Yeah, that's scary. That's terrible. No one wants to die because they sinned. And so let me tell you, the price for sin is pretty high. We don't want to sin, right? Who wants to sin and die all of a sudden? Anybody? No, that's terrible. Yeah. Well, here's the deal. Satan he wants you to sin. He wants you to pay that price so that when it's all said and done, you have to pay the price of eternal death in hell. Oh, no, that's bad because we want to live in heaven for eternity, right? We want to live with Jesus. We want to have an awesome time forever, not a terrible death. Oh, my goodness, that's scary. And so, boys and girls, Satan wants us so bad to fall into the traps that he lays out for us. And wow, he wants us to really get caught in sin. Now, how many of you know what this is here? You want to know what this is? It's a mouse trap. That's right. And what is a mouse trap for? Trapping mice. Yeah, you got to trap a mouse with this thing. It's called a mouse trap because you trap a mouse. Yeah. So sometimes people don't want mice running around their house. How many of you have ever seen a, a, a mouse running in your house? Isn't that pretty scary? It might get up on you. And Now, if you have a pet mouse, this is different. But some mice, they're scary, and they will go and eat all your stuff, and they just make a big mess, and they, they get all, like, in your stuff, and, oh, it's just not good at all. And so somebody invented this really cool mouse trap, and it's great if you don't want a mouse and you want to trap it and get it out of your house. And so guess what, boys and girls? This mouse trap is a way that we can trap something that we want to be gone, right? Something that we want to pay the price of death, right? Yeah, and so, boys and girls, mouse traps are great for trapping mice. But here's the deal. You got to get the mouse to the trap, right? How do you think you get a mouse to a trap? 
You got to tempt it. Yeah, bait it. Yeah, bait it. Now, here's the deal. Temptation is the bait. Everyone say, temptation is the bait. That's right. If Satan wants to trap you in sin, he wants to catch you really good in sin and make you pay the price, then he tries really hard to bait you. He tries to tempt you you to sin. And see, Satan, he knows your weaknesses. He knows just the thing that will get you to sin. He's been watching you your whole life. He's seen you mess up before. He knows when your weakness is lying. Uh Uh-oh. Satan knows if your weakness is watching something you shouldn't be watching on TV or on YouTube. Satan knows if your weakness is following the wrong crowd, and he will do whatever it takes to bait the trap and hook you into sin. See, Satan wants you to mess up so bad. Now, you sa- some of you said it earlier, what is the bait for a mouse? Cheese, that's right. I got some cheese right here. It's pretty good. Mmm, that's good cheese. Yeah, and mice love cheese too. I love cheese. Mice love cheese even more. And a mouse, when it sees cheese, you put a little cheese right here on this piece, and the mouse will come up. And he'll say, oh, just a little bitty piece of cheese. That looks so tasty. I'm going to go get it. And he sneaks over in your house, and he goes past your Cheerios, and he goes past all the things that you don't want mice to touch, and he sneaks over to the mouse trap because he doesn't know it's a mouse trap. And he gets up to it, and he goes for the cheese, and he reaches in, and he gets the cheese, which is sitting right here. And he gets it. Oh! Oh my goodness, it broke the pen. Wow, can you imagine? That would be terrible. And you know what? Satan, he wants you to feel like that pen. Yeah, he wants you to ruin your life. He wants you to pay the price in sin and mess up. But you know what? That's exactly what happened to Adam and Eve in our Bible story. Do you remember what happened? They were going along. They were living their life. They were doing so great. And all of a sudden, they saw that one thing that they wanted and Satan put in front of them. He said, hey, you're not going to die if you get this little fruit. It's fine. And so they snuck around in the garden, past all the good stuff that they could have eaten, and they got up to that tree and they took it and snap, they sinned. Isn't that terrible? And they They messed up. But you know what? Today, we have a solution to our problem. We don't have to fall into the trap of sin because you know what? We can pray that God will lead us away from the trap of sin. We can pray that God will help us out. See, that's the reason Jesus came to earth, to help us so that we didn't have to pay the price of sin and He taught us something pretty important. He taught us how to pray, and he taught us that we've got to ask God to help us out when we are tempted, to keep us away from that temptation and keep us away from that trap. That's why the part we're learning today is lead us not into temptation. Don't let us get tempted by the bait. Don't let us be tempted to lie so that we can be more popular or we can get out of trouble. Don't let us be tempted to cheat on a test so that we can make a better grade. Don't let us be tempted to shove all of our stuff into the closet so that we can have a clean room and we can go play. Has anyone ever done that before? Oh, I tried it. It didn't work. Yeah, boys and girls, we've got to ask God every day to help us to not be tempted, to help us to stay away from the bait and the trap that Satan has set out for us every day. Now, here's what I want us to do. I want us to close our eyes, bow our heads. No one talking, no one listening to your neighbor if they are talking. And instead, I I want everyone's eyes closed, everyone's head bowed. And I want you to think for just a second. Think about maybe the last day, the last week, maybe even the last couple weeks. Maybe you can think of a time where you were tempted. Maybe we were talking about that bait and all the different temptations that Satan puts out for us. And maybe you realize that you've been trapped in sin. You have been doing the wrong thing. You've been messed up. And it seems like you can't get out now. It seems like there's no way out. That you've just just been trapped 
you've been stuck in the cycle of doing the wrong thing. Maybe you've been lying. Maybe you've been cheating or, or, or saying things you shouldn't be saying or doing things you shouldn't be doing. Maybe you feel trapped. Well, boys and girls, Jesus is the answer to getting out of the trap. He is stronger than any trap. He is smarter than any trap. And he can help us. He came so that we didn't have to pay the price of death. But instead, he took on that price when he died on the cross for you and me. So boys and girls, if you have been trapped in sin, here's what I want to do. I want to pray for you. If that's you and you are ready to be free from that sin and to get out of that trap and to be free, I want you to raise your hand real quick. You don't have to leave it up. I just want to see it real quick and put it right back down. Yeah, there's a bunch of us. Let's pray. Lord, help us. Help us to be free from sin. Help us to never, ever go back. Help us to stay away from the things that have caused us to be caught in this cycle of sin, to be caught in this trap that the devil has laid out for us. Help us to, to see those things that, that Satan is trying to tempt us and bait us with and to run from them, to run from temptation when we even get the idea in our mind that it might be a good thing to lie or to say something we shouldn't say or to do something we shouldn't do or to steal or to cheat, Lord, help us when we even get a little thought in our mind to do those things that we would immediately run from that temptation, whether or not it means we actually put on our shoes and take off running or whether or not that means that we stop right then and we begin to pray and ask for your presence to fill our lives and that you would help us to flee from temptation, to be far from Satan's traps. Help us to be free and help us to stay away from the traps of sin. Lord, we love you and we thank you for your freedom. We thank you that Jesus died on the cross for us so that we didn't have to pay the price. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now, you've been listening super well. I've got a few more things I want to tell you about, all right? A couple things that are coming up that you don't want to miss out on. All right, here's the first thing. Some of you may already know this, but today is Saturday, and Saturdays in Slam are super, 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 super awesome. Yeah, they are fantastic. Super Summer Saturdays is what we're doing all summer long in Slam. It is a blast. In fact, today after service, we're going to go eat some hamburgers and hot dogs outside. Isn't that exciting? Every week we're doing awesome stuff in Slam, different things you can get and do and check it out. In just a few more weeks, we're going to be giving away some big, awesome prizes that you don't want to miss out. Listen, boys and girls, this next announcement is too cool for me to even tell you about. So I want everyone to get really, really quiet. Everyone quiet. I want you to listen closely. Check out your screen for something that's coming up really, really soon. Watch. I can hardly wait for Sunday night, August 4th. That's the night we will be hosting Yancey in concert. Yancey is the writer and performer of so many of the songs that our kids sing in Slam and Backyard Preschool. Songs like these. I'm not Join us for this free concert of one of the biggest names in Christian family entertainment. Sunday night, August 4th at 6 p.m. in the sanctuary. I promise, not only will your kids love it, but you will love it too. Awesome. Now, we have had a great time learning all about how to avoid temptation and how God can help us stay away from it. But Right now, it's time for us to say goodbye. We'll see you next time as we learn another part of the Lord's Prayer.